Hi there, I just wanted to quickly show you how to use my Blender Filmic Macros in Affinity Photo. You can find a download link for the macros and a readme in the description below. So I'm going to use one of my renders as an example here, and I've saved it out of Blender as an Open EXR document. There are many advantages to working with Open EXR or Radiance HDR file formats, but one of the main disadvantages is that because we're working with unbounded scene referred linear color values, we don't get the filmic view transform or looks applied to those color values. And that means we have to recreate those looks manually. Now we can actually do this by taking the open color IO configuration files out of Blender and installing them within Affinity Photo, then using a combination of OCIO adjustment layers and lookup tables. But that's rather cumbersome and I wanted a one-click solution to get whichever filmic look I required. But more importantly, I didn't want any dependency on OpenColorIO at all. So the idea would be that you could take a fresh installation of Affinity Photo, run these macros, and instantly get the filmic look that you need. And that's exactly what these macros do. So to install the macros, you can navigate to where you have extracted the zip file, and the easiest way to install macros within Affinity Photo is to just get the AF macros file and drag drop it over the interface, like so. Then release the mouse button. It will tell you it's imported some new macros. And it automatically opens the library panel on the left hand side for you. So to apply any of these filmic looks, we can just simply run the macro associated with it. And you'll see across on the Layers panel, we have a new group that's appeared. It's just worth noting that the first time you apply one of these macros, after running Affinity Photo up, it might take two or three seconds for the effect to appear because it's loading lookup tables in the background. So as you can see, this is just a group. We can hide it to remove the filmic look entirely, and we can show it again to get the filmic look back. Now, just to show you the accuracy of this, I've also saved out some TIFF files. So these are nonlinear gamma encoded image files with some looks applied. So let's just drop this TIFF file over the top. I'll just turn snapping on and position it like so. So this is very low contrast. And if I hide this, you can see that the macro implementation here achieves an exact one-to-one -one match with any gamma encoded image file with the filmic view transform and look applied. Additionally, let's just delete the very low contrast look and let's apply the very high contrast look instead. And again, I've also got a TIFF file saved out with the very high contrast look applied. We'll drop this in reposition it, and if I hide that TIFF file as a layer, you can see the macro once again achieves a one-to-one -one reproduction. Now, within Blender, you may have manipulated the exposure or gamma sliders, or you may have even been using a plugin that will do that for you. For example, Starlight and Atmosphere and Real Sky will both move the exposure slider to minus six stops. Just like the View Transform and Look application, the exposure and gamma sliders do not have any effect on the linear scene referred color values. So here is one of my renders where the exposure slider was set to minus six stops. And of course I can't see anything because this is all overexposed. Of course, at this point, if we try and add, for example, a medium contrast look, nothing happens. So we need to adjust the exposure. We can actually do this in Affinity Photo by using an exposure adjustment layer. But layer placement is crucial. So if I set the exposure to minus six stops above the filmic transform group, it won't work. The exposure adjustment has to be underneath the filmic transform and above the render layer. So we can just drag this underneath. We'll just keep our cursor to the left here and place it above the RGB layer but below the filmic transform group. And there we go. Everything now looks correct. Again, just to show you, I also have this render 
saved out with the medium contrast filmic look applied. I'll just position it over the top as usual and then I can hide that so you can see my macro application of the medium contrast look and then a TIFF file. Just to reassure you that I've tested my application of the transform chain to ensure it looks consistent with any gamma encoded files that are saved from Blender. By the way, if you don't want a particular look and you would rather do the tonal shaping yourself, I've also included just the filmic log transform. And with this as a base, you're free to use adjustment layers to shape the tones how you want. So for example, I might add a levels adjustment, just hold down Option or Alt to visualize clipping, bring that in here, bring that in here, and then I might add a curves adjustment to help me shape the tones a bit further, like so. Okay, so to end this video, I'm going to show you a little caveat, because I know probably quite a few Blender users will be watching this, and you may have already configured Open Color I.O. within Affinity Photo. There's just something you need to be aware of, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So I'm going to set up Blender's Open Color I.O. configuration in Affinity Photo. I'll just go to the applications, go to the package contents on Mac. On Windows, you would just go to Program Files and the Blender subfolder. Go into Data Files and Color Management. Just grab all this and copy it. I'm just going to copy it to a new folder on my desktop for now and paste those files in. Then in Affinity Photo, we want to go to Preferences. If you're on Windows, Preferences is under the Edit menu, by the way. Go to Color, and down here we're going to choose our configuration file. So we're going to find that folder on the desktop, choose config.ocio, click Open. On Mac, we need an extra step because of sandboxing, so we need to just choose Select, and then just click OK. That just authorizes that entire directory. Close this down, and we're going to restart now. We won't save changes. OK, and once we're back in Affinity Photo, I'm now going to open up another EXR document file. Just bring that in here. OK, now because we've configured the Blender Open Color I.O. configuration, this is wrong. We're seeing unmanaged linear color values here. To solve this, we need to go to View, Studio, and enable the 32-bit preview panel. That pops up down here. I'm just going to float it so we can see it more clearly. Now, because we have an open color I.O. configuration set up, it uses OCIO display transform rather than ICC display transform. But there's also an additional issue with this, which is that it actually defaults to none for the device transform which means it actually looks the same as unmanaged. So that's where there is literally no color management being performed whatsoever, and we're just seeing the scene-referred linear color values. To actually work with Blender's Open Color I.O. configuration correctly, we need to set the device transform to, for example, sRGB. And then we could, of course, switch over to Filmic. But the issue is that Open Color I.O. within Affinity Photo was integrated for its non-destructive view transform pipeline. If you're actually trying to export your renders from Affinity Photo as non-linear gamma encoded images, rather than use the app as an intermediary in your pipeline, you instead always need to be using ICC Display Transform. Because when you switch over to a non-linear color format, like 16 or 8-bit precision, that's the color management that is going to be used. Notice these options are now greyed out because we're no longer in 32-bit. I've seen plenty of examples of Blender users 
who are retouching in Affinity Photo and they have set up OpenColor.io and without even realizing it, they're actually using an unmanaged view, they're doing all of their retouching work and then when they go to export or even flatten and convert to 16 or 8-bit, they get a nasty shock because it looks different. So my advice to you is if Affinity Photo is your final destination, as it were, so you're only ever going to export your renders from Affinity Photo, always use ICC Display Transform. The only issue with that is that if you do already have OpenColor.io configured, each time you load up an EXR document, for example this one, it will default to the OCIO Display Transform. So you just need to be aware of that and set it across to ICC Display Transform. However, if you haven't configured OpenColor.io within Affinity Photo, you literally don't need to worry about anything related to the last half of this video. Just open up your EXR or HDR render documents, apply whichever filmic look you want, and then you can go to File, Export, and export to any of these nonlinear gamma encoded formats, knowing in confidence that it's going to look correct. So I hope this video was interesting and useful to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy using the Blender Filmic macros.